Greetings to Grade 11. It's Mr. Dule from the other side. Today, we'll be looking at trigonometry Grade 11. Before we start our lesson, I just wish you all the best and I assure you, the more you invest on this video, the more you will improve because our motto is practice makes improvement. Right. Our objective for today is to look at exam type problems for Grade 11 trigonometry. Now, Today, let us start with a general solution uh, before we continue to the other problems. This is adopted from one of the past exam paper. Guys, if we are dealing with a general solution, please, please make sure that you solve for one thing and only one thing. Why I'm saying that on this question, we have sine theta and we also have cos theta. We cannot be able to solve for sine and cos at the same time. But what I like about this question is that it will remind you of the square identity of sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, which will be 1. And if you make sine squared theta the subject of the formula, it will be sine squared minus cos squared right now i'm introducing cos theta because on the other side i noticed that i cannot do anything with this cos theta the only thing that i can transpose is only sine theta then it means it would be six open bracket one minus cos squared theta close bracket plus cos theta which is equal to four okay Make sure that you pause this video and try to do it on your own and come back and check how I did it. Then transpose inside the bracket, it will be 6 times 1, which would be 6. 6 times 6 cos, it will be negative 6 cos squared plus cos theta transpose 4 minus 4. Okay. And then it means now I'm left with 6 minus 6 cos theta squared plus cos theta minus 4. Guys, make sure that once you see squared, remember that you will find yourself factorizing. Remember, if you have x squared, ax squared plus bx plus c, then that is your trinomial. Let us try to rearrange this thing so that you'll be able to factorize. It means it's 6 cos squared theta plus cos theta, then 6 minus 4 is positive 2, equal to 0. Let us divide by negative sign. It's 6 cos squared theta minus cos theta minus 2 equal to 0. Right, take out your calculator and let us factorize, okay? If we have this type of a calculator, you can just go to your equation, go to option 6, then your A will be 6. And your B will be negative 1 and your C will be negative 2. Okay. And then press or equal sign. It means it's 2 over 3. Remember that if it's a fraction, take that denominator and multiply with X. It means you have 3X and take across 2 will be negative 2. Right. It means now when I have to write it correctly, it will be 3 Remember that you're solving for cos, it will be 3 cos theta minus 2. And then go back to your calculator again. What is your second answer? It's negative 1 over 2. Then cross multiply, it will be 2x plus 1 because it's negative 1. It means it will be 2 cos theta plus 1 equal to 0. Therefore, it will be cos theta equal to 2 over 3 or cos theta equal to minus 1 over 2. Grade 11. If you don't have this type of a calculator, you don't have to panic. You just have to remind yourself with the quadratic formula, which is minus b, and your b on this case, it will be negative 1. Then put negative 1, close bracket, start with positive sign, and then we set our b, it's negative 1. It will be negative 1 squared minus 4 and then your a is 6 and then again your c will be negative 2 your c will be negative 2 over 
2, again we set our a is 6. Then, boom, 2 over 3, we find 2 over 3 again, that's what we got. Then go and change that positive to be negative and minus 1 over 2. It means all of us will be able to do the sum. Right, now, let us find a reference angle. We'll say reference angle cos shift cos 2 over 3 or reference angle again will be shift cos 1 over 2. Please grade 11, make sure that you put a positive value. Don't use a negative value. I will tell you when are we going to use this negative sign. And then go to your calculator again. Go to your calculator. And then you say shift cos, cos what? 2 over 3. 2 over 3. It will be 48,18, which is 48,19. It means it will be 48,19. Go to your calculator. And then shift cos 1 over 2, which is 60 degrees. Then this is 60 degrees. Okay. Now. Right. Guys, we are looking for cos where it is positive. Remember that your cos is positive on the first quadrant and on the fourth quadrant. It means I'll say theta. I will use this reference angle, which is 48,19 plus K, 360, where K is the element of integers. Or it will be on the fourth quadrant, it's 360 minus your reference angle, which is 48,19 plus K, 360 again. Then our final answer will be 360 minus 48,19. It will be, it will be 311,81. 311,81 plus K360. Okay? But on this side, now, that's where we are using this negative. Now, on this side, we'll be looking for the reference angle of cost where it is negative. Cost is negative on the second quadrant and also on the third quadrant. For the second quadrant, it will be theta 180 minus your reference angle plus K360, which is 120 plus K360. or on the third quadrant, it's 180 plus your reference angle, K360, which is 240 plus K360. I hope you understood, guys. If you didn't understand, make sure that you go back and recheck your calculations. Right. Let us proceed to the next one now. Okay. Right. On this problem, grade 11, we have a challenge for cos now. We have cos squared and we have on the sign. Okay. I cannot be able to change sign, but I can change cos squared because of the square identity. That's what I'm trying to emphasize on you. Take use of the square identity. And on this case, it should be 1 minus sine squared. Right? Then, if you substitute, it will be 1 minus sine squared theta plus 5 sine, okay, it's x because we are dealing with x for this case. It's x, 5 sine x equal to 4. Okay, make sure that, guys, you understand what I'm trying to tell you. Try to change the one that is a square identity. So that we'll be able to solve for sine. Because if you remember, we said we only solve for one thing. Then it will be 2 minus 2 sine squared x plus 5 sine x transpose 4 minus 4. Then we can simplify it more further. to be minus 2 sine squared x plus 5 sine x 
minus 2, 4 minus 2. Then lastly, let us divide by negative sign because we cannot factorize if we still have a positive, a negative uh, coefficient of x squared. That's 2 equal to 0. What you need to do, go to your calculator. When you go to your calculator, right, let us assume we are using this method of uh, factorizing, but to those who don't have uh, this calculator, uh, please make sure that you use a quadratic uh, formula. And then plus 2, right, it's 2. Okay. Transpose 2, it will be sine x minus 2. Remember that if your 2 is positive, then when you bring it back to the bracket, it's negative. Your second answer is 1 over 2. What is our golden rule? Yes, you cross multiply first. Yes, you cross multiply, it will be 2x, then transpose 1, uh, 2x minus 1. It means a 2 sine x minus 1 equal to 0. Okay, let us conclude. It will be sine x equal to 2 or sine x equal to 1 over 2. Wow, it's 2. Remember that the maximum value for sine theta is 1 or negative 1. It means for this one, we won't have a solution. But if you forgot, just go to your calculator. It will give you a math error. You say shift. Okay, let us clear this out. Right, you say shift. Okay, right, so say shift, sign to it, met error. Why it's met error? Because it's exceeding the maximum value of sign, which is 1. Okay, and then for this one, let us look for a reference angle, sign 1 over 2. Okay, go to your calculator. We say now, shift sine 1 over 2 which is sine 1 over 2 which is 30 then your sign will be 80 it means i'm looking for sign where it is positive it's positive in which quadrant first quadrant and the second quadrant and then on the first quadrant it means it will be x it will be x equal to 80 plus k 360 where k is the element of integers don't forget that and then on the second quadrant it's 180 minus 30 plus k 360 which is 150 plus k 360 i hope understood guys to sum up what you have done make sure that you change the one which is squared okay let us do for the last one now okay on this one I don't have to change cos because I also have cos on this part. I can take a common factor. Yes, I can take a common factor. If I take a common factor of cos x, I will remain with 2 sine x minus, minus what? Cos x, because it was cos squared, equal to 0. Since we don't have to claim that wow i've cos squared then i can change it to be in terms of sign no look for the other side on this side i have cos x then i need to take out a common factor okay it means cos x is equal to zero or two sine x is equal to cos x if i look for a reference angle for this one it should be cos shift zero but there's the second problem. I cannot be solved for two things at the same time. I need to find a, a solution on how I can eliminate one of them. If we have sine x and cos x, we don't have to panic because we know that sine x divided by cos x, it will be, uh -huh, it will be 2 tan x. Excellent. Sine over cos is tan x, then cos over cos will be 1. It means tan x will be 1 over 2. Okay. Then our reference entry for tan x will be shift tan half. Okay. Then let us go for the reference entry for cos 0. Shift 
cos 0, it's what? It's 90. It means our cos will be 90. The reference angle for tan 0 will be shift tan half. Again, shift tan half will be 26,57. It should be 26,57. Therefore, tan is po cos is positive. It means theta will be 90 plus k 360, where k is the element of integers. Or what? Yes, 360 minus 90 plus k 360, which is 270 plus k 360. Thank you so much, guys. Now, what I like about tan is that you can only look for tan on the on one quadrant. On one quadrant. I'll do a detailed video pertaining that. It means since tan is positive, I can just look for tan on the first quadrant, which is x. 26,50 plus k watts. Again, yes, 180 degrees. Thank you so much, guys, because the period for tan is 180 degrees. Right, grade 11, I hope you understood what I've done. Please make sure that you, re you revisit this video and try to make sense of it. That's grade 11, let us proceed now to a different types of questions pertaining trigonometry. On this problem, you were used to use a sketch in a correct quadrant to determine the value of one tan squared beta without using a calculator. Please guys, on this problem, we need to have a diagram and before we solve our question that we were asked. How do you go about finding that diagram? You go to your given statement. Try to make sure that your given statement is in, in a form of a fraction because we are doing trigonometric ratios. It's in a form of a fraction, then you go to your quadrant. Let us look at our given statement. Our given statement is minus 3 sine beta minus 2 equal to 0, which would be minus 3 sine beta equal to 2. Then we divide by minus 3, we divide by minus 3, it means sine beta is negative 2 over 3. Wow, I'm happy now because now I have a fraction. It means now the last thing that I need to do is to draw a diagram. Okay? You need to make sure that you use this sign that you got at the end after simplifying. We are looking at sign where it is negative. Sign is negative on which quadrant? Yes. All students take care. You remember? Sign is not on the third quadrant and sign is also negative on the fourth quadrant. How are you going to make a conclusion? Where are you going to draw your diagram? It's where you have to go to your restriction now. Your restriction says that Draw your diagram between 0 and 270. What I'm trying to tell you is that your diagram should be on the third quadrant. You cannot draw a diagram on the fourth quadrant because the fourth quadrant is greater than 270 degrees. Let us remind each other our steps. The first step is to have a ratio. It means make sure that you simplify. When you simplify, look at your sign. Look at your sign, right? Look at your sign. If it's positive, tick those two quadrants where it is positive, or where it is negative, tick those two quadrants which is negative. Lastly, go to your restriction. Go to your restriction, and then you'll be able to come up with one tick, right? Lastly, but not least, remember that sign is opposite over hypotenuse which is y over r and remember that your y is your vertical side it means it will be negative 2 your hypotenuse is your diagonal side which is 3 before you go to the question try to find the dead side to find the dead side we use a theorem of pythagoras exactly 
which is r squared equal to x squared plus y squared. Our r squared is 3 squared. We are looking for x. Our x squared, we are looking for x squared and our y squared is negative 2 squared. Therefore, x will be a square root of 3 squared minus 2 squared, which is, go to your calculator, which is a square root of 2 squared is 9 minus, uh, minus 4, which is 5 root. And then remember your plus or minus, and then our x is negative on this side, it means it's negative 5. Then go and plug your 5, it's negative 5. Now, it where now we go to your question. Your question is 1 plus tan squared what? Beta. Okay. 1. What is your tan beta? It opposite over adjacent. Your opposite is 2. Your adjacent is minus 5 all squared. Remember, when you are on this side, if your theta is here, your beta is here, your opposite side, your adjacent side, and your hypotenuse side. And then it's 1 plus 4 over 25. Then you can simplify it more further. It will be then what is 1 plus 4 over 25? Yes, it's 29 over 25. It's 29 over. 25. That's how we're gonna get all these five marks. Make sure that you simplify step one. Make sure that you work with your restriction so that you can conclude the pattern that will draw your diagram, which is step two. Then make sure that you go for the theorem of Pythagoras to find the dead side, and then now we can go to your question. Right, okay. Please pause this video and try to do it on your own before you look on how I did the sum. Our steps, fraction. Yes, thank you so much, guys. Fraction. It means 12. Tan B equal to 5. Yes, divide by 12. Divide by 12. It means tan B is 5 over 12. Okay, we are done with the fraction. Then now we need to have a diagram. A diagram. 10 is positive, it means it's either in the first quadrant or a third quadrant. How do I know which quadrant am I going to use? Go to your restriction. Yes, go to your restriction. Your restriction is 90 and 360. Obviously, I'm not going to be looking at the first quadrant. It means I'll draw it again on the third quadrant. Thank you so much, guys. Then, what is sign? It's opposite over adjacent which is y over x okay your y your opposite side here yes i can hear you saying that it's negative exactly it means it will be negative five your adjacent side which is x exactly it's negative 12. make sure that you remember that guys because on this side x is negative but our answer is positive 5 over 12 because it is in a simplified form that's why it's positive 5 over 12 but when you substitute on the diagram and they need to see this max, uh, negative 5 over 12, then the last thing is to find the dead side exactly. Then r squared equal to x squared plus y squared. Your x squared is minus 12 squared. Your y squared is minus 5 squared. Then go to your calculator. Remember to put your square roots. It means it will be a square root of 12 squared, negative 12 squared, yes, plus negative 5 squared, exactly, excellent, guys, negative 5 squared, okay, it will be 18, wow, okay, it means our r squared, it's taking r, it's positive because it's our uh, radius. A distance can never be negative. Now, my diagram is complete now. I can go for the question. The question says find sine B plus 
cos p. What is your sign? It's opposite over hypotenuse. Your opposite is minus 5. Your hypotenuse is 13. Your adjacent is minus 12. It means it's minus 5 over 13. Plus your cos p is adjacent, which is minus 12 over 13 again. And said, guys, we have uh, LCD of minus the, of 13. It means I have minus 17 over 18. Wow. Yes, I hope you understood. And then make sure that you do these problems, guys. These problems are very easy. Remember your step, your diagram, your quadrant, you solve the dead side, and then you find your answer. Okay. Right, let us proceed now to this type of problems. We are still dealing with a diagram. And these problems are fortunate enough that diagram will be drawn on the first quadrant because our, un, uh, our, our acute angle is between 0 and 90. It means I will just draw a diagram on this quadrant. But remember that we are dealing with trigonometric ratio. It means 75 degrees. It's here, find the dead side. Make sure that you find the dead angle. Make sure that you find the dead angle. It will be 15. Right, guys, we have a problem here because this is not a fraction. How can I make it to be a fraction? Divide by 1. Then cos it x over r. Your x will be m, your r will be 1. Yes, we need to find the dead side. How do you find the dead side? It's a theorem of. Pythagoras. Then our r squared is 1 squared. Our x squared is m squared plus y squared. Therefore, your y squared is 1 minus m squared. It means your y will be 1 minus m squared. Then square root of 1 minus m squared. Now, the diagram is, co is complete. You can now go for your problems. Okay, for 6.2.1, they say find cos squared 105 degrees. Okay, if it's 105 degrees, you don't have to panic. Where can I find 105? Remember, this is 90, this is 180, this is 270, and also this is 360. It means 105 degrees is on the second quadrant. Exactly. Cos on the second quadrant is negative it means it's negative cos okay where can i find 105 it's on the second quadrant yes cos it's what it's negative on the second quadrant they need to see this negative then okay now please make sure that you test your values can you please start with 180 degrees before you go for 90 can anyone tell me why we will 90 will make it our last option? Because 90 will change your trigonometric ratio. Okay. Now, if you go to your calculator, if you go to your calculator, right, and say 180, 180 minus 105, it should be 75. Wow. 75, I have 75 on my diagram. It means it's 75 degrees squared. I've taken to consideration this negative sign. It means now I have cos squared 75. Where this negative disappeared because of squared. Then, okay, cos it is m. It means it should be m squared. Right? I hope you understood, guys. Right, 2.2.2 .2 sine 15. Okay, wow, I have the value 15 here. If my 15 is here, what is your opposite side for 15? It will be m. Your hypotenuse side, it will still be 1. It means cos 15 will be m again. Wow. Right, 2.3, now I'm looking for tan 15. It means now, it said 15 is opposite. This is hypotenuse. It means this will be your adjacent side. Tan 15 will be m over root 1 minus m squared. Okay, 
I hope you have understood. Make sure that you revisit this video and try to make sense of it. But before I proceed, I want to make sure that you have understood this section, guys. Let us do again the second problem. This problem now, we are dealing with sine 43 degrees equal to P. We have a problem. Let us make it to be fraction. Excellent. Step number two, you draw a diagram. The diagram, then I'm dealing with 43 degrees. Yes. Then now I need to find the third side. I need to find the dead side. The dead side would be 47 degrees. Excellent, guys. 90 minus 43. Now, sine its opposite. If I add 43, my opposite side would be P. My hypotenuse side would be 1. Okay. Use the theorem of Pythagoras to find your x value. It would be 1 minus P squared. Make sure that you do it on your theorem of Pythagoras step by step. Right, our r is 1, and then we are looking for x squared plus p squared. Then transpose 1, which would be x squared equal to 1 minus p squared. Then your x is the square root of 1 minus p squared. That's how I got 1 minus p squared. Then now, my diagram is complete, and then I can go for problems. Just go for 3.2.1. Cos 133, do I have to panic? No. I need to ask myself, where can I find 133? 133 is on the second quadrant. Exactly. How is cos of the second quadrant? Is negative. Thank you so much. It's negative cos. Then I need to start with 180. If I don't find any of these two angles when I'm using 180, then I can go for 90. But if I go for 90, I need to remember that 90 is my change my trigonometric ratio. Then when you go to your calculator and say, 180, 180 minus, minus what? 133, it is 47. Wow, I have the value of 47 on my diagram. It means this is cos 47. Okay, then go to your 47, date 47. 47, this is your opposite side. This is your adjacent side. This is your hypotenuse. It is cos 47 will be P over 1, which is P. Thank you so much, guys. Then let us go for 3.2.2. We have 10 negative 43. Do you have to pay for this negative 43? No, because we know that on the first quadrant we have theta, on the fourth quadrant we have negative theta on the fourth quadrant. Then that negative 43 means our 10 on the fourth quadrant, and on the fourth quadrant, 10 it was. It's negative. It's negative 10. 43. Thank you so much, guys. Then if negative, your 1043 will be opposite over hypotenuse. Your opposite side would be P. Your hypotenuse side would be 1 root. It means it should be P over square root of 1 minus P squared. Right? Make sure that you understand. Let us remind each other about our step. Step number one is to, is to draw, or to do it to be in a fraction. Step number two is to draw a diagram and find your third side, and then you can go to your problems. Okay, I hope you're still enjoying this video, guys. So, guys, now let us look at uh, identities. For identities, the only thing that I can tell you is to make sure that if you have a fraction, try to simplify your fraction and make sure that you work hand in hand with your right hand side now if you are trying to simplify this step i hope all will agree with me that we need to take our left hand side we need to take our left hand side to one plus sine theta all over one minus sine theta one minus sine theta all over one plus sine theta don't have to panic. Draw a long division sign. It will be 1 minus sine theta and 1 plus sine theta. Then 1 minus sine theta, 1 minus sine theta will cancel each other. You will remain with 1 plus sine theta with this 1 plus sine theta. Exactly. Minus. 
Again, this one plus sine theta and one plus it would cancel each other. And on this case, I'll remain to one minus sine theta and one minus sine theta. Okay, don't have to panic. Just follow your algebra steps. Then, exactly, you need to transpose. You need to, one times one would be one. Sine times sine, it's sine. One plus sine, it's sine. And then, this is one, this is sine, this is sine, and sine times sine is sine squared theta minus. Make sure that you open your brackets because we have to multiply inside. Again, on this side, it will be one minus sine theta minus sine theta plus sine times sine is positive sine squared theta. Thank you so much. Right. And here I have a uh, difference of two squares. One times one is one. And plus sine theta minus sine theta minus sine squared theta. Second, this is one plus sine plus sine is two sine theta plus sine squared theta, this will be minus 1, minus 2 sine times negative 1, it's plus 2 sine theta, and minus, yes, minus sine squared theta. Okay, then, right on this one, I have 1, minus sine squared theta. Okay. This one would cancel this negative sign. Then two sine plus two sine will be four sine. Let us take the step here. It will be four sine theta. And then this sine squared would cancel this negative sign. And 1 minus sine squared, yes, it's a square identity, it should change to be cos squared, exactly, it means it is cos squared theta. Okay, right, now, I don't have squared on my denominator, it means I can split this cos to be sine theta to be cos theta times cos theta, exactly, then sine over cos is 4 tan theta, but I didn't do anything on this second cos, then I'll have to bring it back as it is, then the power is going to get is 5 max. Don't worry, try to transpose and try to multiply. Okay, let us look on the second one again. I hope even here will agree with me to work with the left hand side. That one of a tan theta, wow, okay, tan is it sine squared theta over cos squared theta, exactly, minus cos theta. I have a fraction over a fraction, then I can say it's one over one, then this would be cos squared theta over sine squared theta minus. Since now I have a fraction on this side, let me try to make this to be a fraction also. Then 1 times cos, it's cos squared theta. 1 times sine, it's sine squared theta. Minus cos squared theta over 1. Then, I don't have to panic. My denominator will be sine squared. Sine squared and sine squared, it cancel each other. will come back as sine squared theta. Okay. Then, Minus then sine times one is sine squared, then times cos squared it would be sine squared theta times cos squared theta. Okay, then exactly have the a common factor of cos squared. It will be cos squared theta, 
it should be 1 is minus sine squared theta all over sine squared theta. Yes, this is cos squared theta exactly because 1 minus cos squared is cos squared again exactly over sine squared which is cos squared times cos squared it's cos to the power 4 theta all over sine squared theta yes that's how we get all these formats make sure that you work with the fraction find the lcd and then you'll be able to find the answer right let us do the last one now okay your left hand side again right Wow, I have a square identity. Let me jump to the square identity. 1 minus cos sine squared is cos squared. Exactly. And on my numerator, I have a common factor of sine theta. Yes, it means my sine theta, then take sine, uh, sine divided by sine is 1, minus sine and sine will divide each other, will remain with cos theta. Okay. And on this side, it will be cos theta minus 1 minus sine squared is cos squared theta. Exactly, guys. Then this is sine theta, 1 minus cos theta. Wow, I have a common factor again. I can take cos this as a common factor. And then cos divided by cos is 1 minus cos theta because it was cos squared theta. Wow, 1 minus cos theta, 1 minus cos theta will divide each other. Sine of a cos will be tan theta. Exactly, exactly. Make sure that you simplify your sum. Okay, let, let me end with this note now. This is the last part of your trigonometric questions. On this one, you will already be given a diagram. Just that you need to complete your diagram. Draw your triangle, then you we'll go to the question. In the diagram below, P, K is to 24. Remember that your K is X, your 24 will be Y. So upon your second quadrant such that OP is 24, this is your R. And theta, it means let us complete this diagram. It should be like this. This should be your K. This should be your 24. Okay. Then, theorem of Pythagoras to find the value of k. Oh, yes, they are looking for k. It means, let me say 5.1.4. I will say what? r squared equals to x squared plus y squared. Your r squared is 25 squared. Your x squared is k squared. Your y squared is 24 squared. Therefore, your k will be a square root of 25 squared minus 24 squared. Exactly. It means, go to your calculator. Right? It means, 24 squared, 25 squared, right? Minus 24 squared. Then it is a seven. Remember your plus or minus, then it is negative seven because our x is negative on this side. Okay, 5.1.2. We have to find the value of tan theta. Remember, tan theta is opposite over adjacent. And you remember that you have negative seven, which means it will be 24 over negative seven. Okay. Find sine alpha. Sine alpha. I don't have the value of alpha. Let's say that alpha plus this is equal to 360. Then if I transpose theta, if I transpose theta, it will be, it means our alpha will be 360 minus theta. Transpose theta. It means I can substitute, say, sine 360 minus theta. Okay, this is minus this which quadrant? Fourth quadrant, exactly, guys. And our sign is negative on the fourth quadrant. Negative, what is your sign? It's opposite of hypotenuse, which is 24 over 25. Excellent, guys. Okay. Right. 
the last one is four squared data. Okay, guys, the last one is 5.1.4. It's cos squared theta minus sine squared alpha. Okay. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is minus 7 over 25 squared minus. So remember that we found the value of sine alpha, and our value of sine alpha. Okay, then cos squared alpha. It's your adjacent of hypotenuse, which is minus 7 over 25 squared. You remember to find the value of sine squared alpha, which was 25. So it was 24 over 25 all squared. Okay. And then you can just go to your calculator. Right, go to your calculator. It's minus seven over twenty-five all squared minus twenty-four over twenty-five. All squared, which is minus 527 over 625, minus 527 over 625. Yes, guys, that was Mr. Enduri from the other side. I hope you have understood this lesson. Make sure that you work hard, guys. The more you work, the more you progress. That is the principle of life. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, to like, and to share. I wish you all the best. 